The most common question I get asked is how do I read and write to SharePoint lists? In this episode, we will do just that using the Patterns and Practices SharePoint Library. I'm Rob Pearmain, this is Robert's Dev Talk. Let's dive straight in. SharePoint exposes APIs to communicate with lists. These APIs expose list data as JSON and accept posts to the API via JSON. PMPSP wraps these APIs into simple to use functions. And there are four basic actions a user needs to perform on a list. They are to create or add an item, to read or query an item, update or edit an item, or delete or remove an item. And these four actions are collectively known as CRUD. I've updated the sample code on GitHub, the link is below, with a simple web part that displays an alert message with an option to tick, don't show me this again, if you like a read receipt. After configuring the web part with a list to store our read receipt, on load the web part will read from a list to see if the current user exists. If a current user exists, the message won't be shown. On clicking the checkbox, an item will be created in our list with the current user in the title column of the list. This is the value that will be read next time the page is loaded to see if the user should be shown the message or not. Here is my list for storing the values. I have configured my web part to point to the list and to display a message and have the option to not display this message again. I acknowledge, please don't show me again. In my web part project, which you can download from GitHub, the link is below, you will see I have added three libraries, PMPSP, PMPSPFX controls, React, and PMPSPFX property controls. I use the property controls to allow me to use the pick list to pick the list I want to refer to, I use the React controls to allow me to configure the title of the web part and to manipulate the list data I use PMPSP and install this by typing npm install dash dash save PMPSP. Okay so it's very important whether you're using React or JavaScript you must put a reference in the main TS file to SP. Next you must override the oninit function and then after calling the parent on init, set up PMPSP to know the context of this web part, basically so it knows which site am I on. In your component file, in our case our React TSX file, we need to put a reference to SP as well. When the web part mounts, we look at the list to see if an item for this user already exists. We do this very simply by pointing to the list collection of the current site or web and getting the unique identifier of the list that's returned from the list picker property control we use. When we use the PMP SP library to get the current user, then we can look in the list and if there is an item where the title is set to the current user's login name, then we set the state has read message to true or false. Next, when we render the web part, if they haven't acknowledged reading the message, the message and the checkbox are displayed. Note, the on change event is used when the checkbox is checked. On clicking the checkbox, the on change function is called. This simply creates an item in the list by passing in a JSON object of fields and their values, in this case just the title set to the login name of the current user. Now if we look at our list, a record has appeared and when the web part is reloaded, the message is not shown. To update an existing item, we would first get the item, normally by using the ID, an update using a JSON collection of fields and values, just like we did when we added it. To delete an existing item, we would again get the item, normally by the ID, and simply delete it. As stated earlier, the code for this web part is in GitHub and the link is found below. I hope you found this lesson useful. Join us next time when we'll build and deploy our web part. If you haven't done already, please subscribe and hit the like button. I'll see you next time.